Okay, hello again. Uh, I was talking about life cycle methods last section, uh, and now I'm going to complete this part, of course. Uh, so, uh, on a, like I said, on application pause, on application quit, on disable and on destroy are really important ones. Uh, on application pause, notifies your scripts uh, about the time when uh, your application is paused, your game is paused, uh, and it gets called right after the frame where the pause occurs. Uh, and okay, sorry, uh, my connection got cut off for some reason. Are you able to hear me right now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, some technical issues are happening today. So yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Again, are you see seeing? Yes, we can see the screen right now. Uh, and uh, on the application quit happens when uh, the player, uh, you know, uh, quits the app or uh, moves it to background as far as I know. Uh, so in mobile games, when uh, your uh, player does not close the application, but uh, when they move background, uh, this might get called. I'm not sure about that. I should check it. Uh, and on disable is the opposite of on enable. is here uh, so on disable gets called when you disable a script a game object or a component of this object uh, and on destroy gets called when your game object is destroyed um, okay once again the important ones are awake on enable start fixed update Update, also on mouse, on trigger, and uh, on collusion is also important. So three comes from here. Uh, what else? Late updates is also kind of common. So now we have nine important ones. Um, on application pause is also kind of important. 10, uh, and these three are, are all important. So you have 13 important life cycle methods to learn um, you might be wondering the magic behind their uh, calling you know um, so did you learn about events in c sharp course um, as you see uh, this is an event function um, so okay there are different, uh, you, you haven't heard about events, right? Because I'm going to talk about it right now. Yeah, I believe we haven't uh, talked about it. So this is uh, kind of an intermediate um, topic in, uh, uh, in programming. Uh, so there are different ways of uh, communication between two different scripts, okay? So one of the ways of communicating between scripts is this one, actually. So now, uh, if, you, uh, if you see uh, how I reached rigid body uh, inside my player movement behavior script. So uh, player movement uh, behavior script and rigid body are both classes, okay? If I control click it. You can see that it's a class, okay. And also, this one is also a class. So now I'm communicating between two different classes. So there are different methods of doing that. Uh, here, I'm using a direct uh, access. Uh, I'm initializing, a, you know, a, actually, I'm. Mm, this is not initializing, but this is injecting. Okay, um, so injecting 
is done at the editor. For instance, if you look at this, I injected my player's rigid body inside my uh, movement behavior script. So I used uh, in injection. Uh, you could also uh, created a player and used its. This is uh, all, this is initialization. Now, uh, after I injected uh, an instance of rigid body class, I can access it directly. I can access its methods directly. Okay. And uh, the problem with that is my class, my uh, player movement behavior class is dependent on rigid body class. Okay, so if someone removes uh, this rigid body component without without uh, me knowing about that, so if someone just clicks uh, here and removes my components, my player movement behavior will not work because it won't. Uh, I mean, it won't be able to access um, this. Rigid body. So it will look like this. Let me just remove it for now. Uh, as you see now, uh, my player movement behavior is missing its rigid body components. So I'm dependent on that uh, rigid body injection. Uh, I could also, you know, write here new rigid body. So this could be uh, possible. Uh, now I used uh, initialization instead of, uh, you know, uh, injection. Now it will update. Okay, it still shows missing rigid body, but when uh, my script gets called, it will, I believe, be fixed. No, it did not fix it. So, so because I um, I just initialized it, uh, but I did not, you know, um, give give some variables inside its constructor. Uh, but I could, you know, uh, by hand manually uh, initialize its um, rigid body. But it's I mean it's not common in Unity. Uh, we use injection instead. So to in inject it uh, I'm going to write rigid body and I'm going to um, let me just yeah uh, I, I inject uh, my uh, rigid body again into my player movement script so it's all fine again uh, and now if I check it uh, I'm able to move it again. Okay. So now, um, like I said, there are different methods. Uh, we covered uh, injection, uh, and uh, you also know about uh, in uh, initialization. And there's uh, the the third method uh, is uh, calling uh, other scripts by events. So. The problem with first two approaches are they're creating a dependency between two different scripts. Uh, if someone changes rigid body script, then I need to adjust my uh, player movement behavior script. If someone uh, removes rigid body from uh, inside the editor, then I need to adjust it again. Uh, this is problematic. Uh, instead of this, Unity uses a better uh, architecture, which uses events. Uh, all lifecycle functions are events, as far as I remember. Yeah, they should be. I mean, at least most of them are events, event functions. So, uh, and Rider also notices that, that they are event functions. Uh, 
and inside mono behavior um, you invoke those events so um, how can i make this more clear um, this is a little bit hard to uh, deliver but let's try so um, okay let me um, create a hypothetical script okay um, dummy I'm going to call this dummy mono behavior so I'm going to um, tell you what mono behavior does without actually showing you the mono behavior code because it's pretty complicated. And uh, I mean, I will instead just show you how uh, mono behavior works uh, logically. So first of all, uh, it's uh, fires events um, I mean uh, this is a hypothetical uh, script what's Uh, on uh, so it will be clear uh, I believe uh, ends on the story Okay, so those are not real uh, functions, okay? But imagine that they are filled, okay? Uh, and I, so this uh, mono behavior uh, notifies all scripts um, that they should uh, call their own on evake functions, okay? So now when this function gets called, uh, all the scripts will uh, call their own evake methods. Sorry. Uh, sorry, their awake methods, not on awake. And uh, after that, all on enable methods get called. After that, all on, on starts methods gets called. Um, after that, all input handling related methods gets called. After that, on update uh, methods gets called. Uh, on disable and on destroy methods also get called. And now after that, uh, the end of the frame happens and uh, next frame, everything goes back to start uh on awake won't be called because uh you know the uh awake and start methods uh, are called only uh one uh, only before the first frame and but inputs are also handled updates disable and destroy are uh, handled again and now next frame uh comes 
and also there is another uh, script that is responsible for physics engine and now i'm going to uh, show you the logic of physics engine and i'm going to call this dummy uh, physics engine okay this is like i said this is not real uh, this is just to uh, tell you about the logic behind uh, physics engine so physics engine uh, calls um, events again but it calls different events so it fires an event firing an event means um, uh, you know notifying all other scripts that this event occurred okay uh, so dummy physics engine fires on a fixed update not on fixed update but by a fixed update so this is a hypothetical method not a real one uh, it also calls uh, late updates uh, and it also calls what else let's see from the life cycle okay if you see physics uh, you can see that there is on state machine which gets called there is on animator move which gets called on trigger and on collision so it gets called uh, fire animation uh, events and fire on uh, on collusion events and also it's uh, fires on trigger events and now these are uh, happening while your uh, code is working uh, so it will look something like um, let me just I, there's okay so the syntax is not correct but so while true uh, this cycle uh, will repeat um, for each physics engine tick okay and again while true um, this uh, you know not physics related uh, events will tick these two will tick at the start And these five methods will uh, take with each render. And we can also actually write render on screen here. And we can write at the start, um, you know, calculate um, physics. Uh, call moments actually for simplicity i'm going to write it here so as you see there are two different um, cycles inside unity uh, one of them is re uh, related for um, fixed updates and uh, late updates animation events 
collusion events and trigger events and this one gets called uh, once per physics engine tick and uh, i said that uh, default value is a hundred times per second but uh, i was wrong it's uh, default value is actually uh, 50 times per second just keep that in mind uh, the, this is uh, i mean this is why uh, the difference between uh, each fixed update frame is two milliseconds not two milliseconds but 0 0.02 seconds um, and the other one uh, gets called uh, when the rendering is finished you know so this i mean this is uh, this will take some uncertain amount of time and when this is done when rendering uh, on screen is done it will go back and it will make other uh, scripts notify uh, for different phases of the program uh this is a you know hard topic to cover uh i'm not sure if you were able to understand it's uh, the first time but if you have any questions just let's talk about this and let's just make this um clear inside your head uh like i said this is just a way of um uh, you know imitating what is happening um this hypothetical uh methods will uh call all the um scripts so actually it will do something like this but not exactly like this So it makes um, player movements behaviors on enable work, okay? Without uh, without making it um, without being dependent on other scripts. So it also does the same for. Um, other behavior for instance other scripts and now it also uh, makes other scripts on enable work as well and it does that automatically um, since it used events, uh, all the scripts uh, called on enable when this event is fired. Okay. Are, are, is this clear? Just I'm I'm curious. Uh, is this too complex? If that's so, just tell me. Erdem, Zeynep, are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, kind of clear for now, I believe. Okay, yeah. So um, last year, uh, when you are uh, writing programs, there was a um, there was a um, flow of um, you know there was an order. Uh, of uh, your script, right? So when you're writing a program in C++, it went from top to bottom, right? Uh, and you could see um, where your program is at. If you use breakpoints or something like that, you were able to uh, follow along, 
where your program is at. In Unity, um, you write different scripts. For instance, let's say that you have 30 different scripts in your um, uh, scene that is working at the same time. The, there is no linear uh, flow, okay? So first of all, all the scripts, uh, awake methods gets called. Then, uh, I mean, it's calling the uh, first uh, first scripts on uh, awake methods, then second scripts awake methods, third scripts awake methods, etc. Uh, and by the way, they happen at the same time, uh, not in an order. So they their awake methods gets called at the same time, in parallel. And after that, all of those methods start method gets called at the same time. Then. Uh, you know, updates. So if I, uh, yeah, or uh, their input checkings happen, then their up, uh, updates uh, methods gets called at the same time. So 30 different scripts are flowing at the same time. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and while it, this is one uh, big box, and also another big box is physics uh, physics engine. And during this phys physics engine, uh, all fixed updates uh, methods are called at the same time for those thirty different scripts. And after that, late update methods gets called. After that. Um, on collision events gets called, after that on trigger events gets called, and uh, calculate physical movements is done at the end. So um, every script works in parallel. That's what you should know. And uh, the, um, the important functions uh, are called in a certain um certain order which have which we have discussed in this part life cycle methods this is second thing that you should know and also the third thing should know you should know is um up uh, uh, is physics engine and um other mono other uh, other um life cycle methods are two separate flows in different speeds. This is the third thing that you should know. So this is how I summarize. Um, so uh, this will be clear once you, you know, get more about Unity. Uh, once you get more examples, uh, it's uh, today. Even today, maybe it will be clear. These just. Um, just let's delete these two from our project. And now uh, I'm going to um, change my movement script a bit. Oh, I actually already done that. So I moved uh, my fixed update here. Sorry, I moved my um, add force methods inside fixed update. Also, there's another problem with my script. Um, if I want to change my control buttons, then I should uh, go inside the code and make this t or y for instance uh, this is not a good approach normally in professional games uh, there are uh, ways to change your button configuration now i'm writing um, hard-coded buttons this is not a good approach but for our cows this is more than enough like i said um, 
maybe if we had time, I can show you how to change uh, this dynamically according to the user preference, you know. Uh, okay. So I added, I add force um, 50 times per second right now. So it's more smooth. Let's try that out. Hmm. Okay. The reason we have an error is we have awake, which is not implemented. So I, we, I mean, there's no need to you call awake. So I deleted it. So I, when I click play, you know, uh, I'm adding a consistent force, but still it's, um, it has one problem, which I didn't like. And it is, um, when I click D, it changes. Uh, so when I'm clicking D now, A, D, so as you see, it's um, it's really not responsive because to change its direction, I have to build enough momentum in the opposite direction. So it gets, uh, you know, it gets to go to the other direction. So to fix this, I can mess with um, add force methods. So there are different force modes. The default one is force mode dot force. And now I'm going to instead use force mode dot velocity change. And I'm going to actually write this nuts inside here. I mean, forward pushing force is okay. There's no problem with that. But um, when I'm going sideways, I want to um, change my velocity in just one second, okay, without, without any delays. Uh, instantly, I want to change my velocity to other direction. So this is why I use force mode. I mean, this is just something uh, kind of intermediate. It's not mandatory to do that. But now, uh, when I click uh, a, it's uh, immediately uh, moves to left or right. Uh, now, since I used force mode velocity change, uh, I should make my sideways pushing force a little less. So I, I took this from 10 to one. And now, it will be more, or oh, it's still pretty quick. So let's go with zero points uh, zero two F. Uh, so since it required a float, uh, I wrote F. I mean, this is C sharp uh, rule. Okay, so it's still pretty quick for some reason. I'm trying to. Uh, add one more zero, so it's even more smaller. Oh, it's still quick. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a good idea. Uh, oh, okay. So I wasn't able to change it because um, the editor was overriding my um, variable. So I'm going to actually delete those since I have I have them inside my editor. I shouldn't change it from here. I deleted that.
now if I go to my player scripts, um, forward pushing force is five and sideways pushing force is one. If I click play, now it's more dynamic uh, and responsive. So uh, I'm going to press A and D, A, D. As you see, it's responding uh, perfectly just in the right uh, instance that I clicked. And to make this even more realistic, I'm going to uh, add some air um, resistance. Drag is air resistant, air resistance. Uh, and I'm going to make this one and try how it goes. Okay, so it's a little slow now, uh, but it's responsive and it's realistic. So I'm going to adjust uh, my speed a little more. So I'm going to make this uh, six and I'm going to make this um, 1.5 and try it. Okay, it's perfect now. Uh, we can adjust more if we want later. I'm going to see how many minutes do we have left. Okay. Uh, so before uh, we edit more uh, stuff, I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to give a break of uh, around uh, 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions until now, feel free to ask. We, I mean, we are covering some intermediate top topics uh, in a short amount of time. So it's okay if you are a bit confused. Uh, I am not sure if I would even understand it the first time. It's, I mean, sometimes is necessary to uh, let the information rest uh, in your head for, the, uh, for a little while. Uh, then you get used to it and you um, get to know, you get to understand the information. So, okay. Uh, see you after the break. I couldn't finish the meeting for some reason. <laughs> 